Bitcoin, the best-known cryptocurrency, is reeling from a two-month freefall. Last week, the value of each coin dropped to $33,000, down more than 50% from its November peak. But many still see crypto as the future of money. According to Bloomberg, the Biden administration is writing a first-of-its-kind executive order to regulate the burgeoning cryptocurrency markets. While Bitcoin may be a part of our future, many of us don't fully understand it. Brooke Silva Braga went mining for a little clarity. FTX is the safest and easiest way to buy and sell crypto. It's the best way to get in the game. At some point, not long ago, crypto trading went mainstream. The digital rebellion is here. Old money's out. It was probably during a commercial break. Fortune favors the brave. Act now, get in soon, the ads suggest. But there's a strange truth about this hot new thing. Bitcoin, the king of digital currencies, everyone is buzzing about Bitcoin, has already existed for 13 years. What is a Bitcoin? Let's put it up on the screen. Yet it can still be hard to pin down what exactly it is or what role it might actually play. So this is the place we found. This is it. We believe they're going to take Bitcoin. It took weeks of hunting to find a physical place we could use the digital currency. Hey, a plain slice. We landed at Helen's Pizza in Jersey City, New Jersey. I'm curious how long this is going to take. Okay, yeah, it's been a while. I got my I got my app. Okay. Jacob Goldstein, a financial reporter with a Bitcoin wallet loaded on his phone. Select your wallet, Bitcoin. Offered to buy our slices. Okay, you ready? This is go time. Uh, oh wait, this is we don't want receive here. This this little arrow. Send now. Okay. Oh, now oh, the two-step verification. Two-step verification. Okay, got to open the authenticator. <laughs> it's this is the future, future, baby. The future of money has a lot of steps. One reason Bitcoin is cumbersome to use is because it's a blockchain. The public place where every transaction is recorded can't handle that many entries at a time. But the idea of the blockchain, using independent computers to separately record and verify transactions... Successfully sent. Oh, yeah. Did you get it? Okay. We bought pizza. ...is also what potentially upends the way banking has worked for as long as there have been banks. Always before, you needed some central authority, the government, a bank, an insurance company, to kind of keep track of everything, right? And the big insight of the blockchain, which is not limited to Bitcoin, is you don't need that central institution. A bunch of people can all just sort of get together and use technology to do it themselves. If everyone keeps the list, no one needs the list. It's everyone keeps the list. The Bitcoin code is out there for everybody to see. There is no company called Bitcoin. It's just this code. The code went live in January 2009. Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever that is, we still don't know, created a revolutionary scheme. Bitcoin would be earned by helping maintain the record of Bitcoin transactions. It's called mining. It's mining right now. As oh, you it's can mining see. right now. It's already mining. Idan Abada has been doing it for years. Every Bitcoin that people buy was mined at one point or another. It also what makes it decentralized. This is what it's running on. Thousands of systems like this. Exactly. And then go try to shut that down. Abada describes Bitcoin mining as a competition to guess a password. Do we think they're going to get upset when they hear this thing? A password that gets harder as more powerful machines try to crack it. Oh, now it's guessing a lot of numbers. Yeah. <laughs> so imagine uh, having this in your house. I might get kicked out. <laughs> It's become a computing arms race with environmental consequences. Bitcoin mining now consumes more electricity than some entire countries. All these processors competing for the 6.25 Bitcoins that are currently minted about every 10 minutes. It used to be more. It started with 50. 50 Bitcoin per, out of pop. Per 10 minutes. Oh every 10 boy. Minutes, every 10 minutes. Now we're making money. And that was easy to mine. That computer could have mined all of them back, back in 2009. You know? The password was just much easier. It was much easier. Yeah. Nobody knew about Bitcoin. It wasn't worth much. It was not worth anything mm. um, until the pizza day. Pizza day. It's pizza. become a kind of holiday. Raise your pizza. Toast to the one and only Laszlo. It remembers May 22nd, 2010, when this man, Laszlo Hanietz, offered 10,000 Bitcoins to anyone who would deliver him two pizzas. When the pies arrived, the world was different. Bitcoin, a currency backed by nothing but code, had done the work of real money. Like gold and paper before it, it had value because a certain group of people agreed it had value.
So unlike money, you can't keep printing it. There's only 21 million ever. Folks like Idan are understandably evangelical. If they can get more people to believe in Bitcoin, its price will go up. My boyfriend really likes to tell me all about it. You know, I black out after a little while. But 11 years after Pizza Day, Bitcoin still can't buy a pour over at Soul Grind Coffee Roasters or hardly anywhere else. It does let you store and send value across the world without bank fees or government meddling. China found that so threatening, they recently banned Bitcoin. El Salvador found it so appealing, they've made it an official currency. Financial services is a trillion dollar industry, one that leaves behind billions of poor people around the world. So the dream is somehow, not just Bitcoin, but all the different cryptocurrencies, all doing slightly different work, could swoop in and take over. There's lots of things in the financial world that aren't great for people, where there's unnecessary fees and too many middlemen. Like, try buying a house. Please, crypto. Please, blockchain. Make it cheaper for people to buy houses. It's weird, though, that it's been the promise for so long now, right? Like, when somebody told me about this 10 years ago, I was like, wow, that's really interesting and exciting. Maybe it'll be money. And it hasn't happened yet. Right? It might finally happen, quite ironically, as big players take over the digital dollars Goldman Sachs ramping up its Bitcoin trading operation that were first nurtured by anti-establishment cypherpunks revolting against the banks after the 2008 financial crisis. To Senator Sherrod Brown, that's more than a coincidence. I don't want to see a repeat of what happened 15, 20 years ago. The Democratic chairman of the Senate Banking Committee sees the marriage of crypto and Wall Street as possibly a dangerous bubble in the image of the housing collapse. Regardless of how popular it is, our job is to protect the financial system from being infected with risk that could bring everything down the way this same kind of crowd, if not the exact same people, brought the economy down a decade and a half ago. The Biden administration's newly planned executive order will try to make regulation happen by bringing together many parts of government. So far, they've all been stalled, in part by uncertainty over whose job it is. It's appropriate that they be regulated. Because of uncertainty, again, over what it is. Is Bitcoin a currency, a security, a commodity, a Ponzi scheme? What is it? It's, uh, it, I guess it can be all four of those. So now there's a battle to control and define this thing that has already made some people lots of money. I actually did buy my Tesla with Bitcoin. I bought a house with uh, Bitcoin, so. You bought a house with Bitcoin? <laughs> yes. But who profits now and how? Senator Brown says Americans probably shouldn't be allowed to trade Bitcoin anonymously. More likely, they'll be pushed to use one of the deep pocket crypto exchanges with the fancy TV commercials. I'm trading crypto. When you have like huge institutional players, huge sums of money invested, what it suggests to me is, yes, clearly regulators might crack down, but it doesn't seem like they're going to get rid of it altogether. So it endures, but I'm still not sure what we do with it. Me neither. And pizza may not be it. I don't think pizza's going to be it. For CBS Saturday Morning, Brooke Silverbraga, Jersey City, New Jersey. Great. You have to appreciate the patience of the guy at Helen's Pizza. 15 minutes to bake the pizza, then 10 right. minutes to accept the <laughs> But he Bitcoin, bought his house with Bitcoin. Bitcoin. So you know, in I, fairness, and that will patience get paid off. It will get easier yeah. as we go along here. Great way to explain it. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back.